Russia's S-70 Okotnik unmanned combat aircraft, which can also act as a wingman for Su-57 fighters, is powered by artificial intelligence and can reach space if equipped with the appropriate engines. The United States attempted to develop a platform but abandoned the project after its engineers were unable to overcome technical obstacles. This is claimed by military historian and director of the Museum of Air Defense Forces Yuri Nitov. The S-70 Akotnik is powered by an AL-31 jet engine and is expected to fly at a speed of 1,000 km per hour and have a range of 6,000 km. It is equipped with electro-optical targets, radio, and other types of reconnaissance equipment, while the internal spaces carry a load of 2.8 tons of weapons. According to Yuri Nutov, it has many elements of a sixth-generation drone. In addition to low visibility and supersonic speed, it can reach high altitudes and, in the future, into space. However, it depends on the engines that are yet to be developed. He also directly hinted at the intended mission profiles of the Su-57, Okotnik, and their manned and unmanned teaming. The Su-57 can command a swarm of Okotnik drones, which opens up new possibilities for strategic combat missions. The Hunter is developed in the same manner as the Su-57. In Ukraine, Su-57 aircraft completed combat missions and flew away unnoticed. This implies that the Su-57 and the Okhotnik team would either destroy large strategic targets such as NATO command centers and civilian military targets, or they would pave the way for large bombers such as the Tupolev Tu-160, Tu-22, or MiG-31, which can carry the KH-101 cruise missile or the Kinsel hypersonic missile to release their payload. Vladimir Artyakov, Rostec State Corporation's first Deputy Director General, boasted that no NATO country has an unmanned combat aerial vehicle system that can compete with the Okotnik. The drone has made rapid progress, with a version with a flatter nozzle unveiled in December 2021 and an announcement that serial production will begin in 2023. President Vladimir Putin received the information from Rostec CEO Sergei Kemazov. Kemazov also stated that a new ground control post for the drone was being developed, implying that the drone could be delivered to Russian Air Force units by 2024. On August 3, 2019, the experimental prototype took its first flight, which lasted more than 20 minutes. A few months later, a 30-minute flight alongside the Su-57 fighter was reported. According to RIA Novosti, Okotnik conducted simulated tests with infrared and radar seeker air-to-air -air missiles at the 185th Combat Application and Training Center in Ashalak in December 2020 to test the unmanned combat aerial vehicle's fire control systems. It performed its first live-fire test by dropping unguided bombs on a target at the Ashalak training facility close to the Caspian Sea. The KH-59 Mk-2 standoff cruise missile was tested on May 28th. However, developments involving the Su-57 on June 9th and July 27th showed that Russia was quickly moving toward achieving an operational manned man teaming capability. On June 9th, RIA Novosti reported that four Su-57s were being utilized in what seemed to be a suppression of enemy air defense operation during the current special military operation in Ukraine. The four members of the group were connected to a single information network to destroy air defense systems by automatic communication systems, data transmission, navigation, and identification in real time. The low radar visibility of the Su-57 was also confirmed. Andrei Yelchininov, deputy chairman of the board of the Russian Military Industrial Commission, said in an interview that the planes and drones could interact not only with each other but also in various types of combat formations. A two-seat variant of the Su-57 is to be developed to control a swarm of Okotnik combat drones and network-centric interactions to strike aerial and ground targets. The June 9th operation shows that it is doubtful that the Su-57 won't be utilized for normal tactical missions, with the Su-30 and Su-35 perhaps handling the majority of the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. Its initial mission description called for using missiles like the Vimpel R-77 and destruction of enemy air defense operations to eliminate enemy fighters beyond visible ranges. It must have been conducted to freeze certain operational procedures and verify the performance of its components, like sensors and data linking. Despite being dubious about the S-70 Okotnik's potential to travel to outer space, a U.S.-based specialist in drone and Russian military technology claimed it was initially intended to be an air defense penetrator. As a result, suppression of enemy air defenses would be where the Su-57 and S-70 teams would be used first, and destruction of enemy air defenses roles is largely confirmed.
This is also the case because U.S. plans for devoted wingmen using F-35s depict destroying dense air defenses by using drones for ISR functions, decoys, and limited weapon discharge. The S-70's potential to travel to other planets comes from sources who are not directly engaged with the project and should therefore be treated with caution. Many of its proposed uses are based on the air defense penetration role it was intended to fill. The U.S. military analyst stated that the unmanned aircraft eliminates the limitations imposed on human physiology when operating at those altitudes, which is expected to be at the stratosphere at roughly 50 kilometers high. Removing the pilot simplifies operation at that level, but once again, we need to have evidence of at least one such test before we can draw that conclusion.